All right guys, so today we're doing a video on BMW rod bearings. To start off with, we're gonna start with S62, which is E39 M5. Then we're gonna go to S65, which is E90, E92, E93, M3. S85, which is uh, E60 M5 and M6. Then we're gonna go on to S63, which is right here in the X6 M, X5 M, F10 M5 and M6 those years. I don't know, all kinds of crap. Um, and then N63, which is the non-M version of this engine, and uh, N55 and S55. So starting with the S62, those cars don't have such the rod bearing issue. Usually you get that at a higher mileage on those. Uh, the rest of these engines, are pretty much clumped together as if you buy one of these with 80, 90,000 miles and it has not been done, you pretty much are gonna have to do it. Now, exception being the N55 being the cheapest engine out of all these to replace, I guess it's not maybe quite such a big deal to worry about it so much. Some of these other engines cost anywhere from five to $20,000, depends on the mileage when you buy it and everything like that. Um, here's the issue though. The best time to do this job is whenever you don't have an issue. Cause once it's knocking, you're pretty much screwed. Uh, you'd have to have a different engine or rebuild a new crankshaft. You have to rebuild the whole engine. There's no more just taking the oil pan off, changing the rod bearings and moving on. Uh, what causes these issues? Nobody really knows. A lot of people speculate low quality rod bearings that are too soft in the factory. Um, it could be the torque to yield bolts. It could be a lot of things. It is kind of funny that Mercedes never had this issue. You know, their G-Wagon has no issues that doesn't have that problem. Um, and that's even more horsepower. So it's kind of odd uh, that that's the way it is. But one thing I could guarantee, you're gonna be further ahead doing it before. So let's say, you need to take it to a shop. Let's say you have S63. We'll give a scenario here. You have to take it to a shop to get it done. I don't know how much that costs, probably around $2,000 to only change the rod bearings. Um, what you have to look out for tremendously is if you only have $2,000 to your name, you cannot go to the shop with that because there's so many cool lines or so many other things attached to it if you have S85, S65, you need Vanos line. You could possibly need a, a Vanos pump, which is a few thousand dollars, on and on and on. Now, unfortunately, all BMWs get sold right about 100,000 miles because that's when they need everything. That's whenever they need control arms, like this car does at 114K. It needs all the control arms done. It needs a transmission service. Every car... Every BMW you buy more than likely will need the transmission service. If you don't do it, it'll eventually start shifting weird. If the fluid gets too dirty, it won't pass through the, through the valve body correctly. It'll stop the solenoids up and it'll basically destroy the transmission. On BMW ZF boxes especially, if you change the fluid every 40, 50,000 miles, you rarely ever have a transmission problem. Very rarely. And that's a good thing, I guess. I mean, uh, but the rod bearing situation, you have a choice. So let's say your car is start knocking, you have to go buy another engine. Let's say, and the, for this case, if this exact car, an engine is about $8,000. You get it here, you still have to put rod bearings and new rod bolts in it. You can't just let it go because it's gonna do the same thing as your old engine did. So. On S63, it's a little bit cheaper since only V8, not a V10. <coughs> I would say it's probably, you're probably gonna spend around four to 500 bucks for rod bearings and ARP bolts. Now, if you don't use ARP bolts and you use a factory, if you cheap out and use the factory bearings and factory torque to yield bolts, I think it's risky. I really do think it's risky. Uh, even on a very expensive torque wrench like we have now, can you really trust the torque to yield settings? I don't know. It's, it seems like there's an awful lot of room for error. You're putting a lot of faith in a torque wrench to do that adjustment. 
I think you're a lot better off using ARP bolts. You run two sets of torque specs, you snug them up, you're on 16 or 20 foot pounds into 50 and you're done. That's it. Like a kid, a little kid could do that. You can't mess it up. And I think inside a very expensive engine, it's worth a little bit extra money to do that. Now, I would not use the factory rod bearings. That's what caused the problem the first time, more than likely. Uh, I would definitely use ACL or something with a legit uh, background. Make sure they're not knockoffs. Make sure you get them from the right place and so on. Um, so it's really a preventive maintenance situation at this point, I would say. And it's not something that you could put off. You know, don't put it off. Uh, but be warned, if you buy an M car with one of these engines in it, it will sneak up on you and get you. We have a lot of guys in Europe saying, oh no, mine's got 150,000 miles on it, it's fine. The Blackstone an uh, analysis came back, it was perfect. And my advice to them always is, change the rod bearings, it is going to grenade that engine, and you're not going to be able to afford to fix it. And there's no, there's no warning, it's just boom, you're driving along, boom, it's done. It's blown up. It's not like, oh, it's knocking a little bit. You could just, you know, you could just fix it and it'd be all right. No, it's all or nothing. So do yourself a favor. What sucks in these cars, the biggest thing, like this one we're doing now, this X6M, all the damn push lock hoses. And you can see how many hoses on this car. Every car that you do, about time you do for the rod bearings is due for hoses. This car probably has, I don't know, I didn't count them yet, probably... What, 30 hoses on it more than likely and what I really wish they made was a lot more of the kits where you could just buy the whole kit for the car even if it was expensive I would still buy that because they don't have to try to source every hose for the whole car and some don't have part numbers and you're trying to match them to the pictures on eBay or Amazon or whatever website you buy your parts from and it's a pain in the butt and having these hoses uh, the push lock hose, you cannot use an off brain You have to use OEM or something equal to it, or it'll drip, it'll leak. You'll have all kinds of issues, and you can see up in here, we've had a lot of leaking up in this area. Well, maybe you can see. Phillip's not here, so I don't have to run the camera, boys. Um, you can see a little bit of white residue on the thermostat housing and stuff. So this thing's been seeping and leaking. I'm sure whoever was driving this before has had to add coolant to it all the time. It was constantly calling for low coolant and on and on and on. Now N63 and, and S63 has a whole separate system to cool the turbos. It has two radiators and a whole separate set of lines and a separate pump to cool the intercooler system for the turbos. And so you kind of have double, um, double of everything, I guess. And whenever we did this, I'm awfully dark here. Whenever we did this car, we kind of cheated. We kind of got lucky on it. And uh, this was a year before they had push lock hoses. So everything was standard hoses like this. And, but this car had, had 28 hoses on it. So it was still well over $1,000 <clears> just for hoses. And we were able to use the URO, URO parts hoses that saved us a little bit, but if I'd have had to buy everything from Porsche, it'd probably been $2,000 for that. Just crazy, crazy, crazy money. So the moral of this whole video is to be careful when you buy stuff. Don't just willy-nilly buy stuff and think you could afford it. You have to be willing to work on stuff yourself, do stuff yourself, because if you cannot do that and you have to pay a shop to do any of this, it's gonna be an insane amount of money, like more than the car is worth, and when you go to a dealership or a shop, they don't care. They just want to make, they, the only sole purpose for them being there is to get as much money out of your pocket as they could possibly get. And we saw that with Mercedes uh, yesterday. We were up there getting the G-Wagon door. And three out of the four corners were, were dinged up or bent up. And, you know, they're going to knock $100 off of it. Sweet, right? That just goes to show you, though, like I was telling Philip, the camera guy, I said, this is the kind of crap that you have to deal with. And somehow they have an angle where it's always your fault. Everything's your fault. And they just want to work till 5 o'clock and go home. 
be cautious of any shop or any dealership on telling you that right now. That'll make a situation like this a hundred times worse. And it probably what's gonna happen, you're gonna get it back. It's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be leaking from everywhere. And it's hard to find anybody to do a good job at all. Some mechanics out there are very good. Unfortunately, those guys are getting fewer and fewer and far between and nearly impossible to find. You know, at least we can make videos on this stuff for you guys to watch so you know how to do it. Um, that's why I agreed to take this. It was the engine, <clears throat> if you've seen the previous videos, I didn't buy this. This is uh, one of the viewers' cars. It's an engine I thought would be worth doing for the channel. And I don't have to spend my money on it to fix it. I don't have to, mainly I don't have to sell the car when I'm done with it. Because I don't like doing that. That sucks. It's always a, some drama or a pain in the ass or something. And he could drive it home when he's done and don't have to worry about it hopefully for quite a while. But yeah, guys, be careful out there. The rod bearing situation will get you and get your bank account hardcore. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back. Our part two to the engine removal is probably gonna be Wednesday. We're waiting on a transmission jack. We're trying to work a deal out with that. It's being a problem. So we could take the transmission, then let the engine and subframe down on our little hydraulic table. And that's how we're going to take this out. We'll film all of it. Stay tuned for that, guys. Thanks for watching. See you all very soon.